Five one Charlie, runway two zero, right turns approved, clear for takeoff. Let's go. Clear for takeoff. Five one Charlie, thanks for help. Uh, five one Charlie's got an engine failure. And say again. Five one Charlie's got an engine failure. Okay, five one Charlie, Roger, you make the left turn to runway three three. Roger. Five one Charlie. Five one Charlie, you're clear to land any runway you want for wind or calm. Five one Charlie, I'm gonna get some altitude. All right. And five one Charlie, it's the one engine. One engine. Roger. And five one Charlie, runway three three is just off your left side. Uh, that might be the closest one for you. Two ways a little bit further to the north, but your choice. Crash SG one, Tarya. Crash SG one appears the aircraft is down, but uh, well off the field, about uh, two miles off the approach end. I can't tell exactly where it is, but there's a large plume of smoke. He's off the field, about uh, looks like about two miles south uh, east of the field. Southeast of the field. I don't think you're going to do anything about it. Yeah, please do contact uh, whoever you need to. It looks like it might be west of the highway, but I can't tell. Any crash risk one? I missed your last uh, comment. Crash risk one, go ahead. Crash risk one, no, sir. Uh, uh, no. Uh, we know it was a uh, a uh, small twin engine. Well, yeah, I believe it was a uh, Cessna 310. Crash risk one, are you going to depart the uh, airport for the site? Crash risk one, uh, go ahead. So, gang, I want you to watch what we just watched again uh, after I get done talking about what I'm going to talk about because I'm hoping that when you watch this again at the end, you'll have a different perspective about it. And that is simply this. Here we have an extremely experienced pilot. I mean, good Lord, the guy was type rated in a B-25, a B-17, a DC-3, authorized to fly a Hellcat and a Bearcat, you got to be good to do that. I mean, you, you got to know what you're doing. So, and he's a smart man. He was a surgeon. So this is this is this is somebody that uh, you go, wow. If that guy ends up getting killed, what what's going to happen to me? Because you know most of us um, are not high time pilots. My dad's a 2,500 hour pilot. I was I never soloed. I I never had my pilot's license, obviously, because you'd have to solo. I've got about 550 logged hours as my dad's autopilot, you know, pinch hitter, pinch hitter, for like over 40 years, and you know, it's scary, isn't it, when you look at something like this? So the perspective that I have for you today is just the fact that uh, we had an F-35 Bonanza in the late 90s. We had an engine failure in that airplane right after takeoff over Goodland, Kansas. We had a 20-knot headwind. There's a video about it on our on our YouTube channel that you can watch, so I won't get into the details. But we uh, instinctively did the right thing and made a, a forced landing, a belly-up landing in a field. Um, but the sheer, absolute, unadulterated terror when that engine quit is nothing like any kind of training we had ever done, any kind of mental preparedness that w that you would do. And I've always been um, a person that's an amateur study of aviation accidents because I find them so interesting. I started reading that stuff when I was a kid out of Flying Magazine, Pilot Air. Um, I learned about flying from that. So I always dove into those things, and um, the only thing I can tell you is that you're not going to know how you're going to react until it happens to you, and I certainly cannot tell you how you are going to react. I do, I do know now how I would react because it happened, and we instinctively pushed the nose down, I mean immediately. My role in that was I was yelling, stall, 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 stall. Um, we had a 20-knot headwind. That airplane slowed down so quickly that, that literally your head felt like it was going to hit the instrument panel. We didn't have shoulder harnesses. Didn't hit the instrument panel. At the same token, the whole nose of the airplane stretched out over the horizon, and the, and the, the instrument panel bowed over like this, and it seemed like it was so far away from the yoke. I mean, I can hardly explain it to you and uh, so many things went through your mind in a millisecond you can't believe it happened to you am i gonna die what about my family i i am uh, having anxiety beyond belief it's it's horror and you are going to have to be calm on the outside and make the correct decisions all right so this accident here 
What, what do I want to tell you? You go straight. Twin engine airplane, you lose an engine, you go straight no matter what happens. No matter what happens, you go straight. Secondarily, when we look at this runway 20, Santa Fe Regional Airport, this elevation is roughly 6,300 feet, density altitude at the time of this accident, 9,000 feet, 9 o'clock in the morning, severe clear day, turbocharged Cessna 310 has a service ceiling on one, en one engine of over 17,000 feet. It should climb up to 17,000 feet, a little bit past that, at at least minimum 50 feet per minute, and uh, all the way up there, the climb rate on it's th 390 feet per minute at sea level. In this case here, if I'm just throwing a random number out there, he was by himself, obviously uh, under gross. So the airplane should have been able to do that. But here's the thing. Who cares? Doesn't matter. You know, the only thing that matters is go straight. If you can't climb and if you can't maintain altitude, just put it ahead. And if you can, when we look at this, the the uh, you know the amount of flat land around here it's all over the place and furthermore i want you to look in the distance you see uh i'm going to show you something here so albuquerque international airport is right over right over this hill over here and it's a thousand feet agl lower it's around 5300 feet it's 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 right around a thousand feet lower than this santa fe regional airport is so if you were going straight in this airplane and you could not maintain uh, a climb rate but you're above red line you're going to end up gaining a thousand feet AGL just heading direct south and so as we do this we also have a freeway over here I'm kind of hopefully I mean this seems pretty obvious right and I believe this was obvious to him that's what's scary about it there is no way that somebody told him, yeah, make an immediate left turn if you ever have an engine failure or right turn to the closest airport. That's not what he was trained to do. That's not what anybody's trained to do. So what happened? The sheer terror, it, it, it overwhelmed him, and he, and he panicked, and he made the wrong decision. Another telltale is that when you immediately contact ATC like that, uh, it, it's a waste of your time. You, you have to stabilize the airplane you know, no matter what. If you are able to fly the airplane versus, you know, maybe you had to do a forced landing like we did, we wouldn't have even thought about calling it. I mean, we didn't have any time for it. It was about 35 seconds roughly, and we were in a field. Gear up, by the way. That's another thing. Have the gear up, folks, if you got a retractable airplane and you're landing off of an airport. The only time I could ever see having your gear down would be maybe on, a, on an interstate. Okay, fine. But if you're going into a field, beach, into the water, you know, Gear has to be up mandatory. No option. Don't think about it. Gear up. Gear up. Gear up. Flaps up. You'll be fine. Have the airplane smooth so you don't hit anything and start ripping things off of it and killing yourself. All right. So Albuquerque is about here, the airport. So as we come over this ridge line, we would be coming this way. And uh, obviously, we're going to be flying to the west of that here. Just a little bit, though. You don't have to make huge corrections. And you literally could do a, a beeline for a 10,000-foot runway, which is runway 21 right here. And I'm sure they could help you out. And so, if you were going to take off that day, you need to be familiar with these scenarios, right? And so it should be really straightforward. This would be and should be straightforward. So, anyway, make sure that you have a plan anytime you are going to depart someplace know the surrounding areas and again it's got to be instinct in my personal opinion you have to train to the point where you understand there's going to be overwhelming fear okay no overwhelming fear and you are going to be expecting that so you know how they always say well expect the engine to fail all right yes expect the engine to fail but also expect your brain to be against you out of fear, out of absolute fear, sheer terror, okay? And um, that is my point that I'm trying to make. And so, again, you're going to go straight ahead no matter what. If you can get the airplane stabilized and flying, perfect. Then you figure out where you're going to go. So aviate, navigate, communicate. Once you figure out, hey, you know what? We're going to go to Albuquerque International. You're on the horn with ATC. 
a mayday 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 twin cessna 5715 mike and remember you are the boss you are the pilot in this case here the air traffic controller is trying to help so he says hey turn to runway 33 that's not what you want to do don't communicate with atc until you're flying and you have a plan the whole role of air traffic control is to help you not die okay and get to where you need to go they could if you're if you do a force landing in a field and you never talk to anybody they're happy as a clam because you know what you're not dead so remember that don't die you have family that are counting on you okay you could kill somebody else don't be a moron go straight ahead these impossible turns are a bunch of garbage absolute pure unadulterated garbage there is no way we could have turned around and made it to that runway in our bonanza we would have been dead i mean how good of a pilot do you think you are you know do i think my dad's a good pilot yeah but he would have died doing that because he ain't that good i mean i've watched bob hoover that guy's good could bob hoover do it sure he could he could do it inverted but you know what the guy's a test pilot for god's sakes you're not a test pilot don't be a test pilot dummy do the right thing please because these accidents are very very avoidable um, and I'm actually going to come back with some other episodes about accidents that happened decades ago that nobody's even heard about that you haven't heard about that are fascinating and we're going to talk about uh, some of those and uh, they're really really interesting and things that happened 30 40 years ago it, they're still happening today so anyway Let's listen to this again, and I'm going to leave you with that and put yourself in a different perspective. All right. Sorry for yapping. I am a yapper. Everybody, everybody tells me that. I apologize. See you guys. Twins S five one Charlie, runway two zero, right turns approved, clear for takeoff. Let's go. Clear for takeoff. Five one Charlie, thanks for coming. Five one Charlie's got main engine failure. And say again. Five one Charlie's got main engine failure. Thanks, five one Charlie. Roger, you make the left turn to runway three three. Roger, 5 Charlie. 5 Charlie, you're clear to land any runway you want for winds are calm. 5 Charlie, I'm going to get some altitude. Alright. And 5 Charlie, it's the one engine. One engine. Roger. And 5 Charlie, runway 33 is just off your left side. Uh, that might be the closest one for you. Two ways a little bit further to the north, but your choice. Crash SG-1, Tarya. Crash Rush G1 appears the aircraft is down, but uh, well off the field, about uh, two miles off the approach end. I can't tell exactly where it is, but there's a large plume smoke. He's off the field, about uh, about two miles south uh, east of the field. Southeast of the field. I don't think you can do anything about it. Yeah, please do contact uh, whoever you need to. It looks like it might be west of the highway, but I can't tell. Any crash risk? When I missed your last uh, comment. Crash, you want to go ahead? Crash, let's go ahead. No, sir. Uh, uh, no. Uh, we know it was a a, a a small twin engine. Well, yeah, I believe it was a uh, Cessna 310. Crash, you want to, are you going to depart the uh, airport for the site?